Greetings and welcome to the Hospital Association of Southern California's podcast series titled In the Spotlight. I'm Adam Blackstone, Senior Vice President of Communications here at HASC. And today we're going to be discussing Communities Lifting Communities, also known as CLC, and HASC's Regional Hospital Supplier Diversity Initi Initiative, which aims to assist hospitals in enhancing their procurement efforts to include diverse suppliers and reduce barriers for diverse owned businesses in accessing hospital contracts. As a little bit of background, under a new requirement, the Department of Healthcare Access and Information, otherwise known as HCI, is developing and administering a hospital supplier diversity reporting program to collect and post hospital supplier diversity reports, explaining the uh, hospital supplier diversity statement and procurement efforts regarding certified minority, women, LGBT, and disabled veteran business enterprises. Our guests today have undertaken the massive task of evolving uh, long-standing procurement practices and creating a culture of inclusivity by establishing relationships with diverse partnering organizations. Today, we are joined by Michael Whittier, Health Equity, D Diversity, and Inclusion from UCLA Health, uh, Matthew Freedy, Area Director, Supply Chain Shared Services, Kaiser Permanente, and Andrew Kwok, Associate Director, Supply Chain Diversity at Senior Sinai Health, Health System. Welcome and thank you all for being here today. Uh, I'd like to kick things off with a few questions. Um, first off, um, what were some of your inspirations for endeavoring to take on your current roles and why is supplier diversity important to you? Anybody care to jump in? I'll, I'll, I can jump in. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to be with you all today. Uh, and uh, my role is is pretty unique, but I, I think it, it really started early on in my career as a graduate intern. Uh, some of my early projects was with supply chain. It was, I was working for a Catholic uh, non-for-profit health system, uh, and uh, a lot of the business operations uh, were uh, really driven by the supply chain business within the, the hospital system. Uh, and so there was a lot to learn. Uh, and so you fast forward uh, to today, uh, the focus on health equity, diversity, and inclusion, uh, and how that intersects with business operations, how you drive value for patients, uh, the uh, resources you need in order to ensure that you provide affirming experiences, uh, no matter who you are, how you identify uh, in an in a healthcare environment is important. Uh, and so we really wanted to ensure that we could focus on having everything our patients need uh, to affirm their identity and uphold the dignity of uh, who they are and how they show up uh, and center them and everything that we do so that we can improve the quality of care that we provide, but then also the quality of our business efficiency and effectiveness uh, as well. And that's, that's why we do the work uh, at UCLA Health that's why I love my work and my role. And it, it gives me uh, some purpose uh, in addition to uh, the, the patient care aspect of it and impacting communities. Well, ultimately, it is patient care, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we feel like some of our positions are so far from the actual bedside care, but ultimately the, the beneficiary is the patient. Right, exactly. Yeah. Great. Thank you for that. Andrew, would you like to share uh, some of your inspirations for getting into supplier yeah. diversity? So, you know, I've been in this space for close to 20 years related to DEI work and also supplier diversity. And some of my inspirations around this is this work is just doing the right things. And it's very aligned, I think, with the Cedar sinai kind of value-based system that we have, right? Um, you know, it is, uh, to your point, right, it's, it's about how do we elevate um, patient care, right? To me, I think supplier diversity has that ability to make that positive impact in our communities that we serve every single day. You know, all three of us here today, we have patients coming in into our um, the respective hospitals and um, supplier diversity is the ability to, you know, think, understand that impact, but also understand what it can do in our community. Things like job growth, Right. And I think it's just good business sense and the right thing to do and engage businesses within our communities that we serve as well. Um, I'll, I'll say, you know, another thing I'll add to it is supplier diversity is a bit more personal for me. Both my parents um, were small business owners. And so it's, you know, I've seen some of the decisions that they've had to make, you know, at the kitchen table. 
right? You hear that a lot. It sounds kind of cliche, but uh, they had to make some hard decisions. They had to hire people. They had to, you know, they were thinking about the next contract. It just, it's very um, tough running a business, right? Um, and uh, I, I think, you know, su- with supplier versus you can make it a little bit easier, right? Uh, and create those opportunities and help with, you know, supplier development, which we'll probably talk about, or how do we include them in our supply chain? So that, that's just, you know, in short, just some of my inspirations. We could talk about it all day, but probably not a good idea to do that here today. Well, I, so I do understand that uh, you're, you're relatively new to healthcare, yeah. right? Um, yeah. And you mentioned a little bit about your, your sort of purpose-driven work. Uh, is that what led you to healthcare from uh, another industry? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I will say, you know, I also have, um, you know, if, if, if my brother's watching or my sister-in-law is watching, uh, they're both in healthcare and, you know, I've just have seen how, uh, you know, how one works for Providence and one works for uh, Kaiser Permanente. And I've just seen how, uh, fulfilled they were every single day and they've been at it for close to 10 years. And I, um, I've always been curious about it. And when this opportunity came up at Cedar sinai I thought, why not? You know, and uh, it's really been um, meeting kind of, you know, my expectations, my thoughts around what healthcare would be, which is, you know, what what can we do every single day to make a difference, right? Um, and uh, you know, in in my little way, I feel like supplier diversity can do that. Love that. Um, thank you, Andrew, uh, Matt. You want to share about uh, what, what's inspired you to, to take on this work? Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. It's really a privilege and an honor to be able to be on a, a, a panel with such, you know, professionals in, in the of the industry. Um, you know, my background isn't healthcare, really. I've been in it for about the last nine years, been in supply chain for over 20 years in military retail manufacturing, and then healthcare. And um, I actually found myself here by accident um, uh, supporting these types of initiatives. And I've been just a really small piece of it. But I think what um, what sort of captured me or what, what resonates the most with me about, about it is um, a lot of the population health initiatives that are sort of behind it. Um, you know, we're in a healthcare or, or, or doing healthcare, what we're trying to do is really improve the health of the population and, and serve these members. And we're in LA, we're in LA County, Southern California. It is very diverse here. So um, it just seems, it always just seemed to make sense to me that if we could re, you know, inject more of our, um, more resources into the local economy, then it will help to improve the the health of that population, right? If you if you have jobs, if you're driving job growth in your in the economies that you're servicing, then those people uh, have a better opportunity to get care. So, I think that's what connects to me, uh, or, or resonates the most with me about about these initiatives. Uh, can each of you share some of the best practices and lessons learned with some of the work you've done around supplier diversity? We'll start with you, Michael. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and I, I can't take credit for any of the work that's being done. And so I, I appreciate being able to to represent UCLA Health, but we have an amazing uh, procurement and sustainability team uh, that is really focused on doing the most impactful work possible. Uh, I mean, they, they do it with uh, just full uh, embrace of community and representing UCLA Health in its mission to just do good. Uh, and so like both of you mentioned, uh, there's so much uh, that goes into supplier diversity. Uh, and so first is building the appropriate infrastructure, right? Making sure uh, that uh, the technology, the marketing, how it's communicated to uh, businesses, uh, how you uh, move businesses through an application process, getting approved 
uh, but then also how do you pay them? And, and that's a huge issue we see a lot of times uh, is that uh, we we do attract uh, diverse businesses, but uh, we don't necessarily get them paid in, in times uh, so that they can pay their bills. Uh, and we know that that's a, a, a big issue for a lot of smaller businesses. There's not a lot of cash on hand. There's not a lot of uh, equity that they can leverage uh, and, and scaling their, their business operations or uh, providing services or whatever it may, may be. And so just making sure the, the proper policies, infrastructure, uh, and the operational components of it really centers the businesses that you're serving uh, and uh, or your customers of, rather, uh, and ensuring that you just be a good customer uh, like we expect uh, folks to, to be good vendors uh, as well. And so um, those are some of just the high level aspects of it. But I, I think uh, once you, you dive a little bit deeper and get into the more nuanced and technical pieces, it's making sure that uh, this is a partnership. Uh, and a, a true partnership. Uh, many times in business uh, dealing, uh, there is one person that is benefiting over the other. Um, and um, that's not always right. That doesn't necessarily get the maximum outcome in a healthcare environment. It's making sure that uh, all the services that are rendered, what we pay for them, how we pay for them, the, they're designed in an equitable way, uh, a just way, uh, but then also uh, in that partnership, you could truly understand the needs of the, the communities that they're serving, their mission, their purpose, uh, and really make sure that there's a deep investment uh, into uh, whatever vendor you're attracting, because ultimately uh, you want them to have the highest quality of service uh, and, and products uh, being provided to uh, you because it's impacting patient care. It's driving value for patients in communities in, in some way. Uh, and so there, there's a lot that goes into it, but um, you have to start at that foundation. You have to start uh, and, and get into the weeds with uh, asking questions from that small business perspective, from uh, that, uh, that vendor's perspective to really understand how can we ensure um, that this is a partnership and we're not doing harm uh, by uh, being a customer and wanting to attract uh, these uh, these businesses because as large institutions uh, and our uh, and our practices are rooted in legacy structures that aren't necessarily designed for that so you have to redesign uh, your systems in a way that that's effective for uh, both ends uh, of that that business partnership. You, you mentioned these legacy structures, and I would imagine that in the past, the criteria for selecting vendors was much different. People were not putting in the intentionality that they are today, correct? Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. Uh, it's it, it was more so based on uh, scalability, how fast you can get things. Uh, it wasn't necessarily focused on quality. It wasn't focused to Matt's point on growing the local economy uh, and making sure that there's jobs that are here in our communities to support our communities, uh, which, you know, build health, healthier school systems, which build uh, healthier local economies. Uh, and so uh, it, those questions weren't necessarily being asked. It was more so focused on the business and not being an anchor in your community. Uh, and uh, fortunately, Unfortunately, that's uh, being uh, turned upside down now where uh, our organizations are, are really focused on how can we uh, do good for the communities that we're serving in a different way and asking questions differently. Um, and, and that really gets us to a different place where we we get to different criteria for selecting vendors uh, in the procurement process and RFP processes, et cetera. So uh, it's, it's a really interesting time in healthcare and uh, it's, it's been fun. It's been challenging and there's been a lot of difficult conversations, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, it's, it's fun nonetheless uh, with, uh, you know, a good purpose all at the, the core of it. Great, great points. Appreciate all of that. Andrew, do you have anything that you'd like to add on to that? Yeah. So for Cedar sinai um, you know, I'm in a role where I'm supporting the entire health system, supporting, you know, our four hospitals, right? So our affiliates with Huntington Hospital, um, 
uh, we're supporting Torrance Memorial Medical Center, um, you know, Cedar Sinai Medical Center, and Marina Del Rey Hospital. What I'll say is supplier diversity for us is this evolving process. You know, we want to continue growing, continue building this program. Now, earlier you asked a question about kind of leading practices. You know, we have started thinking about supplier diversity in really kind of three buckets, right? One is supplier inclusion. The second bucket would be supplier development. And then the third area is supplier outreach. So uh, for supplier kind of inclusion, you know, how do we, you talked about this, right? Like, how do we include these businesses into these RFP opportunities, right? How do we think about that work? How do we make it a little bit more seamless? Because, you know, uh, earlier I mentioned, you know, both my parents are small business owners. To everyone's dream as a small business owner was to work with a large institution like UCLA or Kaiser or like Cedar Sinai. And it's not lost on me about that. So we, we, you know, I think part of it is how do we uh, make that experience better, right? How do we uh, include uh, these organizations? And, you know, it's also about understanding uh, what are some of the barriers uh, and, being able to adjust and eliminate and remove those barriers that make it hard for small businesses to, commute, uh, to compete, uh, these diverse home businesses to compete. And then the second area that I mentioned was really in supplier development. You know, we work with Cedar Sinai Health System, works with a lot of vendors across the board, a lot. And so we want to grow with them as well, too. So for us, when we think about our supplier diversity program, it's really about, you know, what are some of the um, technical assistance programs that we can assemble that's a little bit more targeted that can help them grow as well, help them develop, help them scale up. You know, I think, um, you know, we have that ability to do that, right? And then the third area was really with supplier outreach. You know, we um, really think about this as an ecosystem and we know that we can all do this together. And that's why we're here. And I want to thank Hask for bringing us together Right. Uh, because when we think about supplier diversity, it's a shared responsibility. Um, but also, if done right, we have that shared prosperity together. Right. And being that economic engine, if you will, we're making that broader community impact. But, I, you know, what I'll say about supplier outreach is really about creating those uh, quality relationships you can really count on. Right. And finding these suppliers or connecting with Hask and, you know, um, and growing together. Um, and it's, it's, uh, for us, it's fundamental because I think, you know, relationships do matter, you know, and, um, you know, this is a, uh, well, you know, kind of situation where we're all going to be successful together if we, if we all work together. I like what you said about the ecosystem and in going back to what Michael was saying, uh, I, one of the thoughts that I was having was that healthcare is being delivered, not just at the bedside, but health is being insured at all levels, whether it's through economic output, as well as assuring, ensuring that some of these individuals who might not otherwise be vendors for hospitals now have a seat at the table as well. So I really appreciate the more sort of interconnected approach that this has that some might not necessarily see on its surface. So I appreciate that. And uh, Matt, what about you? Is there anything that you'd like to share as far as best less, uh, best practices or lessons learned at uh, Kaiser Permanente? Yeah, the the question actually kind of reminds me of um, you know I've been I've been fortunate enough to to uh, talk on the topic a couple times throughout the course of this year, and um, through doing that, people then reach out to me and they're like, "How do I get started? Right? Like, what do I do?" And I think if, you know, and, and a lot of times just the dialogue itself can sound uh, almost overwhelming. Like, how do we do all this? Where do we get started? And I think something that, that should be done is, is um, if you're small and you haven't started yet, looking at a, a Kaiser Permanente that's ha that has a really robust system. You know, we're going to hit well over $3 billion this year um, it, with diverse spend. Um, that might that's a great model to look at and to to maybe emulate, but kind of break it down. Start small, and I think there's really three main points to think about. One is what does your sponsorship look like? Make sure you have that C-suite level sponsorship. We were talking a little bit about that. 
uh, in rehearsal. It's just it's important that that the decision makers in the organization are are aware and are supporting the initiatives. Uh, the second thing is just start having some goals. Come up with some goals that are attainable for your for your um, for your initiative, and maybe it's. Uh, you know, a couple percent of your total non-payroll spend in maybe non-clinical aspects, because on the clinical side, there may not be as much options. It's much harder to shop for those. But in, you know, business services, construction, things like that, there are, there are a lot of diverse suppliers out there that you can contract with tomorrow, and they'll, they'll do uh, world-class work for your organization. And then the third thing I would, I would recommend is have a routine. You're not going to know what you're doing in the in the beginning. You might not have a vision. You might not have developed those goals. Those are not just going to develop themselves. So create some kind of cadence so that you get a few people together and and, and on a routine schedule, you're meeting to discuss what you want to do. You're meeting to discuss what your goals are and how you're going to start trying to eat the elephant because it looks really big, right? So you just you kind of kind of nibble at it a little bit at a time, and then once the you know, once you start getting it, then it's, you know, you just take off. I, I just remember the first time it was asked to me, I had no idea. I really didn't know where to start. And at the at the national level, there's already kind of a program and it's running. Um, but the, the ask was, you know, and they know this already, There more, more can be done, you know, more can be done at, at where the rubber meets the road, where the healthcare is actually delivered. We want you guys to go out there and do it. That's really what pulled me into it. And there's just a, a team of people sitting around the table all looking at each other going, how do we start doing this? Um, and the first thing we actually did was reached out to our local chamber of commerce. You know, they're, they're connected with a lot of diverse businesses. And that helped us to start establishing some, some, some conversations with different people to give us or, or clue, us in, clue us in on, on how to do some of the work. But, but yeah, I mean, just to kind of recap the question, get sponsorships, set some goals and establish a routine. Great. All great uh, pieces of advice and, and uh, a, a ton of gems there. So thank you for that. Um, I want to start with you, Andrew, and just ask, um, what are your thoughts on how Southern California hospitals can get ahead of the curve of regulation and legislation? Wow, that's that's a really good question. <laughs> I'm glad you started with that. Oh, gosh, <laughs> that's a really good question. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll answer the question this way. I think, um, you know, HASC and, and CLC has done just a fantastic job of being very proactive to, um, you know, get ahead of it, you know, to l really learn what are some of the things that we can all be doing together, right? Um, how do we establish specific programs or initiatives um, that will benefit all of us? Because I, I really do believe that, um, you know, supplier diversity works best when everyone's involved and engaged, right? Uh, uh, that's the um, best way to help drive this as a region, right? Um, you, you know, I... I think when it comes to supplier diversity, of that the goal is to help elevate, you know, health outcomes, or if you're trying to make an impact in the community, um, working together, there's strengths in numbers, you know, and if we can all do this together, you know, we'll, we'll definitely be able to make a, a, a good dent in this through job creation, job growth, and so forth. Great, thank you, Andrew. What about you, Matt? Do you have anything to add to the to the question? Uh, yeah, maybe maybe a little. Um, you know, it's it's a t it's it's a difficult question to uh, to answer, but I think that you know, number one, and and I think Andrew was 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 kind of saying this too uh, about being proactive. Is to be proactive, you need somebody or or, or a couple of bodies to 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 be thinking about it. So. Uh, number one, identify a resource, you know, identify a human resource who can who can focus on this for you. And healthcare is dynamic. I've worked in several different organizations and there's really nothing more dynamic or complicated than healthcare. I mean, it it, it really is brain surgery sometimes. So um, it's it's important. There's a lot of competing priorities. Um, so not having somebody with uh, sort of a key focus on it. I think would be a mistake. So, so number one, I would say, 
uh, define a resource. And then number two, my recommendation would be is don't try to reinvent the wheel. Um, there's organizations out there that have already done that, and there are resources available to you like Hask and CLC who can help guide you through the process. So it, it is overwhelming in the beginning, and, our, and I think our natural human tendency is to be a creator, right? Be an innovator, be a creator. Um, but what I've, I take away from the military is, is, is don't reinvent the wheel if you don't have to, right? Mm -hmm. Steal somebody else's plan. And in other industries, that's almost impossible. And in healthcare, we're much more, um, I think, open to sharing our business practices and processes um, and, and, and being a little bit more transparent about how we're executing things because we're, we're all in it to improve the, um, um, the health of this population that we're serving. So if we work to a little bit more collaboratively together, then we can do that. If, if you're struggling, I'll help you. I know uh, a month ago, PIH had this wonderful event where they were uh, bringing uh, uh, diverse suppliers in and, and kind of, you know, shopping them, getting their, their, their stakeholder customers to, to connect and maybe get interested in those products. And then, you know, they were, they were gracious enough to invite all of us to that event as well so we could see it and learn from what they were doing. So I think, I think that's important, you know. Um, Identify a resource and then don't reinvent the wheel. F figure out who can help you through the process. Great. And hopefully through podcasts such as this and other ways, they don't have to reinvent the wheel. And some of the nuggets that you shared, they can then take that wisdom and, uh, and implement it in their programs as well. Okay. So thank you, guys. Um, let's see. The next question I want to ask is, um, how do you conduct your outreach with diverse vendors or suppliers and do you have a success story that was fruitful for both the business and your hospital? We've talked a little bit about that relationship, but do you have a specific example? And this is for any of you. Yeah, we. this is a journey, right? And so we've been uh, consistently learning from our vendors, their experience, uh, which, which Andrew mentioned, uh, and making sure that we can customize an experience that uh, works for them. Uh, and it's a little bit challenging because we also are, are a statewide system uh, as well. And so, uh, and, and not only that, as UCLA Health, we also partner with uh, UCLA campus as a whole as well. And so there's uh, various uh, entry points uh, for us. Uh, and so we have to make sure that we are uh, really creating a central place where people can learn, people can ask questions, uh, but then also, uh, as mentioned, we can develop uh, that relationship in a meaningful way from the moment someone is engaged or thinking about uh, being a part of our supply chain. And so uh, that uh, was some of the first steps uh, that our procurement leadership uh, took to ensure that uh, our current vendors even could have questions answered. Uh, and so that, that platform was built out. Um, and then we uh, built out a, a small business first uh, uh, initiative where we could really uh, grow uh, the uh, diversity uh, with those those small businesses and make sure that we're growing with them as uh, as both Matt and Andrew uh, both mentioned uh, and so that that has been uh, sort of the the focal point is starting there and and really making sure that we can ask the right questions but uh, as uh, as this journey has, uh, you know, ensued, we've also uh, thought about what does this look like across all of our UC Health campuses. Uh, and so we've been talking with UC San Diego, UC San Francisco, Riverside, uh, Davis as well to understand what are their experiences uh, and are there vendors uh, that they are working with that are uh, that they really love that could meet a need for uh, the diverse patient populations that we're serving that are here right here in the state of California for example. And so if there's something missing um, that we can also attract uh, those vendors and say, hey, well, since you're already in this system over here, uh, here's an opportunity here. And, and um, that's not always easy to do. And so it, it really requires 
going back to the sort of this advocacy and understanding uh, policy change, it, it requires a, a strategic mindset that is uh, in, uh where you're anticipating uh, the environment rather than being reactionary uh, and uh, really making sure that as part of that anticipation uh, that you are building or, or uh, adopting <laughs> as Matt mentioned, uh, uh, workflows and uh, frameworks uh, that uh, work well, um, that you don't necessarily have you know, issues as it relates to new policies being adopted because you're already doing the work or you have the infrastructure to, uh, you know, not be as impacted by uh, decisions as they come down. And and so that, that has been our focus is to really um, work collaboratively uh, across our, not only our organization, but our campus, our UC campuses uh, to ensure that we are doing the best we can in that that vendor journey as a part of uh, as being part of our our supply chain thank you appreciate that do either of you have any specific examples yeah if i could just add to that i mean i i loved how you started off the answer with supplier diversity is a journey because that that is the truth it is a journey right and through that journey you go through ups you go through downs but it's growth it is a it's a path that's worth it and, you know, in terms of success stories, you know, uh, Cedar sinai has just kind of made a commitment to really develop those relationships. I think when I when I think about business transactions, business agreements, um, I think it's very important to have those relationships with those vendors, with the potential vendors to see how you can make an impact in this space. And so um, for us, we have spent considerable amount of time trying to understand, you know, what are some of the capabilities and competencies of these businesses. We live in an area where there are a lot of businesses right here in the region. Um, and so what we want to do is understand what are they good at? What are some of their prior experiences that might make them a really good fit for Cedar sinai or any of our four hospitals and, and, and so forth? So I think it, it's a um, that's that's kind of the one one of the areas that we um, will continue doing is to make sure that we have open kind of communication with businesses, because oftentimes, you know, business owners are, and I mentioned this because both of my parents were small business owners. They're just trying to establish a relationship. They're trying to better understand your pressure points, right? As an organization, they're trying to understand where they can help, right? And so the communication, the relationship is key for them to help understand that. Um, you know, and I think the second thing is, you know, for us, we've really I can't stress enough about kind of the relationship with Hask with CLC, but we've also established relationships with uh, City of LA's Ramp, right? They have a great database, a great uh, staff there that we work very closely with, and you know, sourcing and identifying diverse owned businesses. And so we we uh, every time there's an opportunity, we will work with Ramp or you know, CLC and see if there's any any um, suppliers that we can help identify for the next opportunity. So I think, um, you know, those are kind of two, two, two um, examples of what comes to mind. Great. Yeah, what I'm hearing is that a lot of collaboration, yeah. right? We talked about not re reinventing the wheel, but also collaborating and learning yeah. from each other. And, and uh, that's been successful, it seems, yeah. for both of you, for all three of you. Um, anything that you'd like to add to that, Matt? You know, it's it, it's probably mostly tagging on, but um, you know, shopping is is one of the more challenging, I think, tasks for when you're looking at uh, diverse suppliers. So registries are helpful, and over time, you know, Kaiser Permanente has been able to build up quite the registry where we can tell what zip code they're from, what hospitals they're supporting, and what what category of of supply that they help. So I think um, certainly some kind of, um, you know, open source registry um, is helpful. And I think, you know, outreach is outreach can 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 sort of be done on, in two different ways. It can be on purpose where you're where you're where you're targeting it and you're actively going through it and you've operationalized it through maybe your RFP process or RFI processes on the on the procurement side. Or it can just be by accident. 
And um, sometimes by accident is the easier way. So uh, and, and a, a quick story on that is uh, we're trying to reset uh, a wing of the hospital with all this new racking and stuff. And there's all these different suppliers you can use. Well, one of them just right before we were getting into the, the, the meat of the plans uh, shows up and it happens to be a woman owned business who does this kind of work. Um, if I had not been a part of this uh, impact spend group, um, I wouldn't have even maybe considered them, right? Because there was such a small company and we're kind of big and we get nervous if you can actually provide support. But because of that, we're, you know, because of the background on the, uh, with the impact spend work and the diversity spend work, we were um, more willing to give them a shot, you know, because of that status, right? Uh, and so we did, and they came in, and they did wonderful work for us. So, yeah, I think, you know, you, you can be deliberate about it, um, and there's a lot of different ways to do that and operationalize that. Uh, but if, you just, if you're just aware of the initiative and aware of the intent, it can happen on accident because sometimes these suppliers are, um, are marketing their diversity status. And if you're kind of paying attention to it or aware of it, you notice that and you pull them in and you give them a shot. Yeah, Matt, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned like the organic piece of this, because one one uh, aspect of our business that we haven't mentioned uh, is our staff. Uh, and we have leaders that are like working relentlessly, developing relationships, uh, especially on the business side of it. Uh, whereas like your, your clinical uh, diverse spin may not be uh, as flexible, but the business operations side of it, there is a little bit more flexibility. Uh, and your leaders uh, serve as advocates or opportunities for businesses as well. Um, and I see that a lot uh, with uh, leaders reaching out. It's like, well, how do we get them into uh, to be an approved vendor, what are the next steps? And so right. uh, you're, it's also being able to uh, leverage your staff in that, that process, but also educate your staff on the processes uh, to be uh, an impact purchaser uh, and ensure that that force that's driving value in your organization uh, can um really be derived from the leaders, the staff, the people who are doing the work, who are uh, also rooted in community as well. Um, and I've seen that uh, we have uh, very uh, good reactions from our leaders. When I, I didn't know it was that easy or I didn't know that this existed and I'm so glad I found this. And it alleviates burdens for them as well because uh, they, they want to do impactful work. Uh, and I truly believe everyone uh, who is in health Healthcare is in it to uh, really impact patients and, and community health, uh, and so it's it's really good to see when you uh, when you can have all of your your people involved in processes, and so that accidental or organic process with your staff being involved uh, in uh, these processes to to impact purchase uh, is phenomenal as well. Yeah, and um, you know uh, just. Building off what you're saying, another another way to look at this, we call it tier two spend. But in healthcare, we have um, a lot of global purchasing organizations that are doing a lot of the heavy lifting on the on the front end of our procurement and our contracting. And um, if you engage them, they oftentimes will have these programs established, or they will oftentimes have registry. And since you pay them to work for you you can guide them down this path as well if they're not already doing so. So um, I, I think another kind of avenue to a lot of this is, is um, engaging your GPOs and having them, having them deliberately look for, um, for your diverse supplier. Excellent. Great discussion. I do want to pivot to a lofty and bold question, which is, uh, what is your vision for the future of hospital supplier diversity and how can CLC and HASC play a role to assist you? Mm. That is a, a good one. <laughs> <Very> lofty one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't ever have a problem jumping into the pool first. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, the, the vision for me from my perspective in the organization, right? I'm only one piece of the puzzle. My hope is that uh, equity and justice can be 
uh, integrated into everything that we do, every business decision, uh, every operational decision that we could be asking, uh, uh, is our community uh, getting the optimal value out of what we are doing? Uh, and ultimately, uh, that requires us to look at our impact purchasing and our vision for that uh, with that uh, being a partnership with all of our, our locally uh, owned businesses, our state owned businesses, but then also doing it across our entire system. I, I, believe, I believe we've uh, been doing it uh, well and we are on a journey to do it better, And but also recognizing that it's continuous improvement. I think one of the places where uh, continuous improvement has been uh, a centerpiece for, I mean, quite some time has been the supply chain space. Uh, and so we want to get better at that. Uh, we want to ensure that the vendors are coming in, that they ultimately are living out their mission uh, as uh, pillars in their communities as well. And we're we're really driving or addressing the economic uh, and racial inequities uh, and uh, uh, dis uh, discriminatory practices that lead to inequities uh, with uh, healthcare outcomes. Uh, and if every aspect of our business can do that, especially impact purchasing, uh, then we're moving in the right direction. Uh, so for me, uh, again, to just recap is uh, really integrating that equity and justice, but then also making sure we can be as impactful in community with community being a partner in this journey. Uh, and so uh, it's a lofty goal, but I, I think that we're on our way. And I, I see both Matt and Andrew writing vigorously. Uh, but we have to remember that healthcare is nearly a, what, a quarter, a third of our, our national budget. Uh, there is nothing but money flowing, transactions happening constantly. And so how can those transactions really impact the overall health and well-being of the people we're serving is ultimately the questions we have to be asking ourselves. Yeah, great questions and great response. Very great response, right? <laughs> um, and you, you weren't kidding when you said lofty. It is a very lofty go. I think the way I would respond to that is that, um, you know, we, I would go back to kind of Cedar sinais um, in a mission, right? Uh, it is our purpose and our mission is to be compassionate, to embrace diversity, equity, and inclusion. And knowing that as kind of our, our mission, our value system, um, I, I think the way we address this is really through, to your point, um, ultimate success or outcomes would look like addressing health equity in a very effective way, right? Um, how do we make sure we maximize on econo economic opportunity or contracting opportunities would be a, a second way. But, you know, it is a... Um, it's truly a journey, right? And but if we can focus on those things, I think that's that'd be the kind of the lofty goal, right? In, in terms of how we we accomplish this, awesome. and we do this in a very collaborative way, right? With HGI, I think the second part of your question was, you know, how do how do we um, uh, impact? How, how do we work with you know organizations like HGI and CLC? And I think again, it it really starts with um, sharing, uh, working very closely, but also sharing like how, where are the opportunities? Where can we all align towards? Because if we can all do that, we can really, I, I truly believe we can maximize and make that impact that we're, we, that, you know, we want to in this region. Excellent. Well, I saw your pen vigorously moving as it he was, was speaking. Moving. Yeah. <laughs> these are, these are fun questions. Great brain teasers. Yeah. Uh, oh, late in the morning. Um, yeah, so vision for supplier diversity. I think um, you know number one that we that organizations sort of build it into their mechanics on on the procurement side that it's always a consideration, right? Every time it's just on autopilot where you know you uh, new there's a new requirement for something consulting a service a supply a drug or whatever it is it it, it gets vetted through this process where where uh diverse suppliers are in consideration and that they're weighted a little bit differently so they're able to compete um 
the, the next thing I would say is that, um, you know, how many diverse suppliers do we have that aren't registered diverse? And what is, is, is that process of, of registering them streamlined? I think if, if you are a supplier that, that you have to sort of take initiative to get that status or, or, or get that, uh, sure. get that set up, I'd like to see that be a little bit more automatic. I think, uh, HKI could probably help with that a little bit where, um, when I, and I'm just spitballing here. I haven't put a tremendous amount of thought because I don't know how it all works. But but um, when you when you're registering your business, why isn't that a question? Where we capture that right at the very beginning when you're setting up your LLC or whatever business uh, license that you're setting up. It should just be at the onset and not something that they have to do after the fact. And then can't that be collected? somehow where it's a little bit easier for us to shop for for these diverse suppliers. And then thirdly, and this might be kind of a lofty vision, but um, wouldn't it be great if we could have some proof that this effort that everybody is putting in is, is, is paying some dividends? Um, how do we measure that, right? How do we measure success? We, we count the dollars that we're, that we're spending on, on diverse suppliers. But is that, you know, how is that translating to, to better access or more access for, for diverse populations of people who, who might be underserved or underprivileged? So I'd really like to see how that connects. Um, you know, we know that economics is the number one determinant of how healthy you are, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, simply put, if you have more money, you're healthier. It's the number one determinant. Okay, I mean that's that's understandable, but this effort is it is it making people uh, more well, more you know wealthy? So I think in the in the future vision, I know we're all just we don't even have policy yet, right? Like it's not, I, I don't think it's fully uh, done yet. But but how do we, how do we know that what we're doing is working? I would say that's great. That's a great point. I do suspect that. So many programs are, are still in their infancy, but will later be able to sort of prove their value through some of these metri metrics and, and benchmarks um, and ultimately be able to show that population health has been enhanced as a result. So it's a great point. Um, I do have uh, one more question. Um, and I think you guys have given us a lot of great advice. This would be if you had one piece of advice to give to somebody who was early on in that journey, what would that be? Listen to this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, oh, we had such great conversation and the, the pre production is like, oh, people missed out. We should have recorded that. But you have the best questions. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but but I do believe I, I think Matt really defined it early with uh, best practices, right? Is uh, defining the problem, you know you know, creating goals, collecting your current data and understanding uh, the metrics uh, uh, a little bit better. Uh, and, but but take, before you even get there, I think it's really defining what this is for your institution. Um, you really need, uh, to Andrew's earlier point, that C-suite buy-in. Uh, you need your, your leaders for a lack of better purposes to be generalists where they understand supply chain as well as they understand their their roles and the, the work that they're doing. They're understanding the value uh, that brings to uh, the work that they're doing for their staff, for their leaders. Uh, and, and so starting there with, uh, with that awareness and acknowledgement is going to be so critical to whatever action you deploy. Uh, and so no matter what that looks like, you have to start with that awareness and act, uh, acknowledgement piece of the current reality in your organization to move forward. Uh, and that requires your leaders to be fully engaged in this process, endorse it, understand it, uh, but not only endorse it and understand it, be champions of it, uh, be able to communicate it, uh, be able to share and articulate that vision, that purpose for why your organization is doing this. Um, but not only doing that internally, but doing it with your external stakeholders as well, because now once you're communicating that your potential vendors and the businesses that you could potentially work with are now seeing it, 
hearing it is now being reinforced. Uh, and, and that's what grows that, that journey. That's what improves the quality of uh, that the, those processes uh, for your organization, for the businesses you're working with as well. And so that, that would be it for me, starting with that, that awareness and acknowledgement piece with your, your leadership and across your organization. Well, that, that's great. Um, let's go to you, Matt. Be bold. <laughs> you know, go for it. Just, uh, you know, dive, dive right in. Don't, don't be, don't be overwhelmed by it. And uh, just, just tackle it a little bit at a time. You gotta, you gotta create all the frameworks and get the sponsorship and stuff. But um, oftentimes these types of initiatives don't start at the C-suite level, right? You have to get their attention. So if you're a project manager that gets it, gets it assigned to you or, or a manager or director uh, or somebody who may not have a real big voice in the organization, just take it as an opportunity to kind of be bold and, and uh, run at it full steam ahead. And eventually it will start working for you. Excellent. Andrew. Yeah. So I would probably say for folks that are starting out, um, Make sure the supplier diversity is not operate in a silo, meaning if you're doing this, you're starting out, make sure that it's not, you know, um, make sure that you're integrating this to a larger platform, right? Um, or a larger initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's so important because you want to get the support that you need. You know, for Cedars Sinai, we consider kind of our supplier diversity program as part of our overall DEI um, movement initiative change for our organization. And then, you know, just because I've done this for just a, a hot minute, I think there, uh, as a practitioner of supplier diversity, maybe some uh, pointers that I've learned along the way is, you know, it's, it's called the three piece, right? Yeah, you kind of have to be patient, right, as you evolve and help your supplier diversity program grow you have to be persistent right and persistent with you know your internal stakeholders right you talk about stakeholder engagement your external stakeholders and then third is make sure you keep that passion alive you know this work around supplier diversity is extremely fun but it can be challenging right and so uh make sure that you you continue um, working with, and I feel like I, I'm going to repeat this so much, is work with your community, right? And I think CASC and, again, CLC has done such a great job of creating that community so we can have exchange of information, um, you know, and so that we're not reinventing the wheel, right? You mentioned <laughs> something that you learned in the military, that we're we're constantly um, innovating together, right? And that's, that's I firmly believe that's kind of how we're, we make our mark. But that those are kind of just initial thoughts about how, um, you know, how to approach it if you're just kind of starting off. All great answers. So what I'm, if I were to summarize, invest in understanding and purpose and establish champions and get everybody on board along with the community. Be bold. I'll just leave it at that. Be bold. <laughs> Patience, persistence, and passion. So I think those are some good words to sort of close on. Um, are there any resources or upcoming events uh, where our, our listeners might be able to get more information about uh, hospital supplier diversity? Yes, yeah, certainly. Actually, one that's coming up at the beginning of October, October 3rd through the 6th, uh, is the Healthcare Anchor Network Conference. And there's a partnership that Hask and CLC uh, is uh, underway with the Healthcare Anchor Network. Uh, the Healthcare Anchor Network is a, a network of over uh, 75 hospitals and healthcare organizations that are uh, incubating and scaling strategies to address uh, socioeconomic and racial inequities that lead to poor health outcomes in communities. Uh, and the three pillars uh, of that strategy uh, is diverse hiring, impact purchasing and impact investing. And so everything that we talked about today will be addressed at that conference. And so we will see you there. There's representation from uh, the organizations here. Uh, there'll be a CEO panel amongst uh, others. And so you can come and learn from the experience of, of people who've been doing it. So you don't have to 
reinvent the wheel, as Matt mentioned <laughs> earlier. So uh, pretty exciting to host them uh, on our uh, on our campus. And so uh, please feel free to, to register and, and join us in this great conversation. Another great event that's also in October is our first ever um, supplier diversity conference sponsored by Hask and CLC. Mark your calendars, save the date. It's going to be a really great event for folks to meet experts in this field and also other suppliers. So definitely mark your calendar for October 30th at the California Endowment. Um, this has been an amazing discussion. I've learned a lot. Obviously, I had just mentioned I'm probably the one here that's not the initiated expert. However, I feel like my understanding of what you all do is much greater now, and I think our members uh, will appreciate that. So um, thank you very much and hope that this can be one of many discussions that we can share with our listeners. Thanks, thank you. Thank you.